everybody. We're here to cemetery. Yes, yes, we Woo! are. Living it up. Yep, we're at Oak Hill Cemetery in Battle Creek. Yep, so um, this is kind of a local cemetery. We're doing a video here on a supposedly haunted headstone, so watch for that video to come soon. But since we're here, figured we would show a few of the... More famous people that are buried here. Yeah, because Battle Creek actually has quite a few famous people. Yep, and this is from it. This is the oldest, if not one of the oldest cemeteries in Battle Creek. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I know it is the one of the oldest, if not the oldest. So. Yeah, so we're going to walk right in this one little spot that we're at. It's super windy today. Hey, guys. Hey, Sheila and Andy. And hey, Philip Parker. Hi, everybody. And Becca. Hey, guys. Um, so we're going to go out and look at a few of the headstones that are right here in this one little spot. We're going to hope for good internet service and the wind won't. The wind, yeah. It doesn't muffle our voices too much because it is windy today. So. Yeah, so we're going to go out and Josh will tell us about some of the people right here where we're near where we're parked. So this is a kind of a big kind of... Do, do, do. do a little spin out here at the cemetery. There is a chapel. We'll kind of go drive by. Where's the chapel? It's right I don't know if you here. can see it through the, yeah. the trees. We'll go drive but. by. That's fine. But the first grave we're coming up to is a famous abolitionist that most people will learn about in history class when you're younger is Sojourner Truth. She ended up living here and dying here back in 1883. And this is her historical marker and headstone. Yeah, so this is a pretty big one um, for the area. It says she, when she died, she was aged about 105. 105 years. I like that there's an about. She was born a slave. Yep. So not as good records of how old she really actually was is. right they, yeah they didn't know so and this is something kind of there's always people always bring food and fruit and all kinds of stuff out and leave it at her headstone then they've always done this as long as i can remember coming up here so. and these are like this is fresh fresh carrots grapes apples oranges don't know the significance but they've always done it so We'll have to dig in and find yep, out, we'll why. out why. You guys go yep. Google. Why do people leave <laughs> fruit and flowers for Sojourner Truth? Right. Yeah. Something different. So, so, what else is Battle Creek known for? Well, cereal. Of course, it's the cereal city. And there's Post cereals. There's Kellogg cereals. And right behind us, this big mausoleum, is the founder of Post cereals, C.W. Post himself. We can walk around to the other side and see the front of it if you want. It's yeah, I feel like you can't get the magnitude of how... No, it's huge. For like a mausoleum, it's gigantic. How big this thing is. So mm. yep. we'll walk up. You go ahead and I will kind of film you as you go. Yeah, it's big. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's the size of something that you're not going to see get built anywhere anymore ever. I mean, it's it's huge. I bet you it's 30 feet tall, probably. 35 feet tall. I mean, it's tall. So, so in CW Post, here is Cereal City, USA, um, where Post Cereal used, was in Kellogg Cereal. And so a lot of the cereal you eat is made here. Yep, it is made here still today. So... If you come up close, though, look, people have done this over the years, come up and put their handprints on here. Kind of creepy. So, and it's an old, I think that's a bronze door, too. So. That is kind of creepy, guys. Yep. Heck yeah. So. And you can't really, actually, you can, you can see, see in a little bit. Let me see. Stay with me, guys. Let's see if we can do this. Where's my camera on this thing? Can you see anything in there? Probably not. Probably not, no. So when I look, when I look through it, I can see two, at least two um, crypts right. inside that my friend is hot. <laughs> Him, my friend, or am I the friend? We'll both be hot, how about? Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So there's at least two in there. And then, just like mausoleums, there's going to be a key 
that the family holds so they can get in. Yes, the road to Wellville. Yep. So tell the story of how he died. Uh, he ended up actually killing himself because he had an appendectomy and he thought he had stomach cancer and just kind of lost it, apparently. So. People go crazy here in Battle Creek, I guess. <laughs> Serial yeah, people. For sure, for sure. But yeah, the road to Wellville. Oh gosh, who was we'll, in that? Was Anthony? Nah. I don't know who was in it, but we'll go over to W.K. Kellogg's grave in a minute. He's buried here also. So yeah. we'll go check him out in a minute. It's um, at the back of the cemetery. But one of the... That's Frank Kellogg. That's one of the Kellogg. I think that was his brother, probably. Yeah, huge obelisks, which oh. if you were to do buy and create these obelisk monuments. I don't know if they could even do that now. Or like they would the do that. cost of these would oh. be. Yeah, this one right oh. here is one. insane. That's, yeah, that's another one that this is probably 40 foot tall. That mausoleum's. I don't know. They're both 30 to 40 foot tall. I'm guessing They're right huge. off 30. huge. But there's a headstone over here. I don't even know who this person is that we're going over to the one headstone. But it's insanely big. So why not show you? So this is Frank Kellogg. Frank, Frank Kellogg. Frank J. Kellogg. And that was W.K. Kellogg's brother. Yes. So that was one of the Kellogg brothers. But here's one over here that I just want to show you guys because of kind of the magnitude of the size. And hopefully you guys don't get motion sickness as I'm walking because I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done motion with video like I am right now. Yeah, that one's huge. So this is the Hinman Risden stone. Yeah. Don't know who these people are, but ready? Do to do. Yeah, it's huge. Like, look at that thing. It's gigantic. Who is Josh? Josh is my boyfriend. He's also the crematory operator. Yep, and I was a vault man for 27 years and been in the funeral business for almost 30 years now. So we figured, where are we most comfortable? Like at the <laughs> cemetery. The so we yeah. figured, why not do some cemetery videos? We're going to start doing some like creepy ghost, not ghost story, but like haunted Just, stones. Like, yeah, like you know old legends like the video that you're gonna see here soon that we did about the one headstone here in the cemetery yeah so we're gonna try and do just some little it gives us little road trips something to do but it's fun hopefully something for you guys to watch that you'll enjoy yeah so. you're hot they say oh, well that's we'll nice take it <laughs> that's nice so that. we're going to hop in the car and drive over to wk kellogg's, WK kellogg's headstone so he is the Big founder of Kellogg's, yep. the big cereal man. So, um, yeah, it's kind of fun to come out to the cemeteries and have, especially like this is an old, yeah, what did we say, 1844? 1844 is when this was opened, yeah. This is in Battle Creek, Michigan. It's about 55 acres here. The original was 20 to 30 acres or so, and they just kept expanding onto it. People are still being buried here. Um, there's, I think, like 29,000 burials yeah. here currently. Right. About 1,700 veterans or something, I think, was one of the statistics. <laughs> Josh does not have any brothers. So, no <laughs> brothers. No brothers. Sorry. I got sisters. Yeah. Tell them a little bit about you. Well, again, I've been in the funeral business for, oh, 28 years now, going on 29. Was a vault man for 27 of those years, up until a little over a year ago when I started running the crematory. Um, yeah, I have a son who's 14. Um, I've got four sisters uh, that are all younger than me. Half sisters. Yeah, and half stuff. sisters, and yeah, I, it's... A ragtag bunch of us but <laughs> but yeah and I'm I'm from Battle Creek and still live here and yeah starting this little venture with Carrie it's fun yeah just gives us a little bonus something to do and to share a little more about kind of life um do we swap a lot of stories I think some. Yeah, and now that we're working pretty much for the same funeral home primarily, uh, we are involved with a lot of the same 
you know, families and cases and stuff Situations. like that. So yeah. Yeah. And I've known Josh and I have known each other. We figured about 18 years yep. um, through the business. Yeah. It's so, you know, over the years we would kind of see each other once in a while and then I might work for a fu uh, funeral home that didn't use the vault company that he worked for. And then I'd see him again. And yes, back in the day when I was single and stuff, I'd get super <laughs> excited if I saw Josh the vault guy. And Josh the vault guy never knew that. So. <laughs> yep, yeah, gave him all my best, all my best flirting. It just didn't do nothing. Um, but he was always either with somebody or not. You know, this is the first time in our life, I think, um, it kind of lined up. So it kind of worked good. But what was I going to say? Oh, shoot. I had something I was going to show you that was so thought provoking, I'm sure. I don't know. Um, can we pull down this one? Yeah, yeah we can. Uh, so, yeah. So we've both worked in the business kind of for what seems like forever. Somebody asked a question I was going to answer and it went away. Um, the downfall of doing videos on my phone is your messages kind of go away super fast. How old is all those cemeteries? So, Charlie, this cemetery is from 1844. Yep. So, um, here, let's check out yep, we're in Mr. Mr. Kellogg's. Kellogg's grave. Do my kids like Josh? Yes, they like Josh a lot. I'm very lucky that my kids like Josh. My kids love my ex-husband's girlfriend. We, the four of us, um, you know, they have four great people in their life. So that's all you can hope for. And I love them. They are. Yeah, we are a couple. So, so. Um, so here is, which this is kind of cool. It's very different. It's got the Kellogg. Let me flip this for you. Logo okay on it. Same oh thing. yeah, see? That's so, the way the logo is on the cereal box, the Kellogg K. Is that pretty cool? No, this cemetery is not full. Um, there are still graves here. Yep, the so they each have individual little Kellogg yep. things. I kind of like that it's got like this little border that makes it a little private, but not. And it's got, see, it's got WK Kellogg there. Sundial. A sundial that says the early bird gets the worm. Hmm. <laughs> when I wonder if like um like are they buried under here? Yeah, they It makes me now want to go yes. investigate more. Like is he cremated and is he in here? Cremation would have been not I was gonna say I'm typical. Pr I'm pretty sure they're probably buried in here. Under and this was the family, yeah. Like there's him. That was probably his wife, I'm guessing. Irving Kellogg. See, w, another W.K. Kellogg, W. Keith. That was a kid because he only lived to be four. So. Well, well and this one was only one. Right. So, so it looks kids. like two infant sons. Yep. And then maybe a so daughter. There's two. one that was, that one's like 49. That has to be. This one is 29. Yeah. And this one is. I'm doing fast math and it's not the best. 30, 60, 64. that one's a little older. 64. So it might be all, you know, him and his wife and then there are four kids yeah. here. Um, but wondering like the configuration, are they buried like beneath these headstones? Um, yeah, I'd, I'm gonna have to find out more. Yeah, we'll, we'll dig, but I don't, yeah, I'm not sure. I would say they're laid where the headstones are. They're probably laid this way. Yeah. Head to foot. I mean, some of these are kitty, really kitty wumpus in this um, cemetery. Like, okay, I'm going to show you this. This looks like a crazy, I got to hop this little hedge. This looks like a crazy mess right here. Look at this. So you got headstones like facing each other. Well, and you've got headstone, you got head and feet together, but where they laid the stones makes it confusing because most of the time the head goes which direction, Carrie? Uh, the head is to the west yes. and the feet to the east, to the east. And but so these are literally like pure chaos going through here. So these, I guarantee you, are head to foot while they're supposed to be. And then this is a prior footstep because they're laid this way and it's just the way they did the road. You see that sometimes. Yeah, there's a, actually a lot of it. These all, look at all of these. 
where they are facing each other. So like, That's, they used to who that knows lot. what's... When they lay them out nowadays, most of the time they don't do that. But then you also have this big like so, Oxley in the middle, but I'm guessing that is for stone. all of these because yes. you have Oxley and then you have father, mother, right. Edgar. <laughs> <laughs> And I've always loved these circular. Yeah, those are neat. I don't know if they have a name. I don't either. But, but I've always kind of loved these circular log type. Yeah, kind of cool. I don't know. They're just kind of old style. But there's a lot of family stones as you look around here. So, you know, they, everything does look pretty old, which from 1844, I mean, we're, what, 180 yeah. years old? So it is. Like a lot of these are the... It, original probably yeah. i mean these are deaths in Letterings. 1902 and stuff 1895 the lettering starting to wear off them but when you think about the grand scheme of like how old things could be it's not that old in the history of like stuff 180 years is not that long yeah but there's a lot of interesting history right here that we just looked at right now and there's so much more in here right which i think is everybody can kind of relate to since it's Cereal, yeah. cereal. Every, I feel like everybody's head had to have eaten out a box of cereal. And then she just asks, "Is there a slave section in the cemetery?" Yeah. Not, not that I know of in here. I just know that this is, you know, this has always been a big deal because it's where Sojourner Truth herself is is buried. Yeah, so. I don't think that because we're up in Michigan, it's not as common to be yeah. separated. Yep. Um as it is if you go a little more down south. I think the first really separated out kind of black and white cemeteries were in southern Indiana that I encounter. I'm sure they're around. I'm not saying yeah. it doesn't happen, um, but it's just not as common up around our area. No, it's not. Because and we're in the <clears throat> north um, and not saying that there wasn't slaves. I know I'm going right. to... But yeah, it's not clone him. There, there, <laughs> clone there him. was a there was a question a second ago about is there a reason behind the head being to the west, feet to the east? And yes, there is. It's it's of biblical nature, and the sun rises in the east, and so when the Lord comes again and brings everybody back to life, and they sit up, they're facing east, and that's why the head always goes to the west, feet to the east. That's just the general rule of things. That's how it's always been. What would you tell someone that wants to be a mortician? Um, you really need to go shadow. Go check out what happens day to day in the funeral home. I say a lot of people really get connected to the business and interested in the business because maybe they got a warm and fuzzy going to a funeral and they really thought the funeral was wonderful. And so, man, I want to make that impression on everybody. Um, but there's so much more to it. Like the two hours that I may spend on the phone with the insurance company or having right. to order supplies or all of the kind of boring things that happen around a funeral home as well. So getting an opportunity, even just taking a funeral director out to breakfast and chatting about a day-to-day -day stuff, just really finding out more about what happens. How do you become a crematory operator, they're asking. You can <clears throat> get through an organization called CANA C-A-N-A, -A. it's the Crematory Association of North America, I believe. Okay. And you take an online test, you have to study and you have to pass it with, you know, a passing grade and you can get certified. But then you have to find somebody who will either let you job shadow at a crematory or is willing to hire you and teach you how to run their machine and everything else. And I've gotten a message since we did, Josh did his first Do live. I have, I have on one kid. 14. Yep. I just saw that question. Do I have kids? Um, since we did a live on my channel, Carrie the Mortician, that has since Josh talked, gone and gotten his certification yeah. so he can go work in a crematory, yep. um, which is just cool. I want to go look at that headstone okay. quick that they filled yep. in. Um, one thing that happened, uh, we don't encounter it too much anymore, but back around the turn of the century, which seems like we're talking about like a million years ago, but it was just 22 years ago. Yeah. But it was a big thing because a lot of headstones, people when they installed them ahead of time, put a 19 on them, anticipating they would just come and put the last two numbers. Yep. 
But then once we got into the year 2000, we would have to go back in. They would have to fill to be able to then engrave. Right. Um, so it didn't always match. Um, and here's one that looks like they had to do just that. Yep. Where the 19 was there, but Geraldine kept going further than they thought. So they have to fill it so they can then engrave the 20, whatever the number is when she does pass. Yep. So some people just did a little preemptive 19 and had to back pedal. Yep, I saw a lot of that when I was still doing burials, for sure. So, yep. it's very cool little section with yep. all this very mature tree growth. So it kind of creates this little like cozy nook. I saw another right question a couple minutes ago that somebody asked if there's a potter's field in the cemetery, like to bury people who don't have any money. And there is, but the kind of unique thing about this cemetery is it's not in this exact cemetery. Way over here, the entrance road, when you come in, there's another little cemetery that sits across the street and that's where their potter's field is here. Do you wanna so go drive to it? We can, it's called Mount Olivet. Yeah, we can go drive to a little potter's cemetery section yep i don't know which sections are the potter's field i just know that's where Ooh, the potter's field we're gonna is. do one more quick headstone thing so this is something that a lot of people may not realize so harry over here was a mason and edith was an eastern star so a lot of those type of organizations don't exist as much sometimes you'll hear about the masons a lot of people think like the Illuminati and stuff, but the Eastern Star is the female version of the Masons. They have very specific, we can drive while I'm talking, very specific rituals and things they do at funerals, just like the Masons do. So the Masons will put a white apron on the deceased. Yep. They will lay, white they'll gloves. wear white gloves and they lay them in. They'll do like sprigs of something what are they like some kind of an evergreen yeah, um that right. they'll put in a lot of tradition and ritual to what they do and then the eastern stars all wear white dresses they each carry like a different colored flower and bring it in and um do a lane of flowers and this reading and things so a lot of tradition and ritual to what they do it's just not around as much so a lot of newer funeral directors you say an eastern star service and they're like huh? yeah. what are you talking about but it's because there's just not a lot of organizations yeah. that exist still for it not well, organizations a lot of um groups well, within communities and it's the same with the american legion the american legion comes out and does honor guard like duty at graveside for veterans and stuff they volunteer to do it but there's less and less people volunteering and becoming a part of the American Legion. And, and so, the BFW. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's all kind Same. of one, one yeah. unit, yeah. But you just see less and less people being a part of that. And so there's just less and less going on with it, unfortunately. Yeah, same with, you know, you have the Moose Lodge and the Elk Lodge and all of those different organizations that used to be these social clubs back in the day. There would be the male side of it and then the female side of kind of the organizations and they just it's kind of gone to the wayside um which is sad but yeah. you know society changes socialization changes how we do things change um oh debbie your message went away too fast i couldn't read it all uh -huh. just retype them if we're not answering your question just repost it because they go away super fast yes they do so people even get out oh in georgia we still pull over for funeral procession yes. so people even get out and stand by the vehicle to show respect you know we encounter yep. i always love like when you go through construction areas if there's a procession and the guys and women take off their hats like i love seeing it yep I have family in Northeast Georgia and I go down there usually yearly and I watch them do it all the time down there. So I think that's awesome. I wish they still did it up here, but they don't. Yeah, Josh is gonna go visit some family down in Georgia yep. here in July. July. <laughs> in July. And there is a haunted story about a cemetery down there. So he's gonna do, yep. him and probably his son, yep. rope him into it, will oh, do yeah, a video when they get down there for that as well. So, um, 
we just think this is going to be a fun little venture to go out to cemeteries and show you guys some different stuff at cemeteries and especially some of the, I don't know, not haunted, but kind of stories that kind of go along with them and such. Yeah. So we're now into Mount Olivet Cemetery, which is kind of the Catholic, more yep. so Catholic cemetery. And as far as I know, from what I was told before, when I used to come in here for work, is that there's kind of a potter's field back along the edge of this. And so there's probably some unmarked graves. There's probably, you know, I don't know what there is. I don't know. I know that at Oak Hill Cemetery over there, they have their own crew of guys. And the vault company I worked for, we would drop the vaults off. They would do their own services and setups. This cemetery, uh, I have buried a couple people in this cemetery over the years and done setups over here. This is like, it's part of it, but it's not. It's weird. It is more part of the Catholic Church here in Battle Creek, I think. So. Sharky. I've got a video coming up with Sharky next, a uh, guy yeah. named Sharky next week. That's funny. Yeah. Um, so, no, you know, these, you can tell when a cemetery is a little bit newer because right. they don't have the huge obelisk style because that was much more like that was 1700s, 1800s. 1800s, yeah. And I still am like, where did they procure that big of st stone and, and everything? How did they get them out here? How, how did, did they, they get them out? out? Yeah. How did? Oh, I clicked a button. <laughs> um, so theoretically, you think that it's in the back here? Yeah, that's what I was told. Yeah, I'm gonna before. flip. So you guys, so let's see. I don't really see. I don't see any either. That's what. Anything I was told that about. would be. It seems like normal graves. Yep, it does to me. Um, I would have guessed if anywhere it would be over here down by the, closer to the river in Oak Hill, but I was always told that they did it over here in the Catholic section, so. You can definitely tell older. These are like 1920s and such mm -hmm. grave headstones. Um, you know, it's just a cemetery. Next to an abandoned warehouse. Next to an abandoned warehouse. A lot of, <laughs> I mean, a lot of this area is pretty uh, run down. The yeah, city has um, really taken a turn, kind of like a lot of cities, kind of like Detroit did and, and such. There's still industry, but um, definitely. Nothing like it used to be. Yeah, I really don't see a. I don't either. I don't really see a potter's field. Do you know which one we should go visit is over by Jackson where all the prisoners? Yep. We'll do that. So in Jackson, Michigan, which is not that far from us. About 40 miles. About 40 miles uh, is the state prison, one of the state prisons. And um, they have a cemetery that is correlated to the prison that yep. um, there it's uh, kind of the potter's field for prisoners. So. Um, we'll have to go visit that one. Yep. So if you guys find any uh, places or cemeteries you think we should visit or any haunted stuff we should go visit in cemeteries, yeah. kind of around Michigan or northern Indiana, Ohio, anything that would be a fun little road trip. Let us know. And we'll go visit them. Heck yeah, we will. So um, Debbie in Georgia. Is the haunted cemetery in Georgia you're going to in Blue Ridge, Georgia? Yes, that's where my family's from, Mineral Bluff area. So I get down to Blue Ridge, Mineral Bluff, LJ, that whole area. Yep. So, yep, you guys will see that because me and my boy will go film that and then you'll know exactly what it is. And if you're from that area, then yeah, you've probably heard of it. Yeah. So, so we like fun little stories like that. Lakeview Cemetery in Cleveland, Cleveland. Ohio. I have some family outside of Cleveland. We could go there also. You do? Who's in Cleveland? My dad's sister. Oh. Yep. Damn learning, guys. Yep, Medina, Strongsville area. Yep. We've been dating a year, but you learn new stuff <laughs> all the time, right? Yep. So, well, thank you guys for joining us for our first live at a cemetery yeah, here. Thank you. Um, we'll watch for the story about the supposedly haunted headstone here in Battle Creek, Michigan. Yep. And we'll see you on the next one. All right. See you guys. Bye.